I'd like to call the February 2018 meeting of the Board of Education to order. We'll begin with an invocation from Ms. Etheridge. Good evening. Tonight I'd like to read a little bit from the Don't Sweat Guide for Grandparents. Be open to learning from your grandchildren, and two of mine are here tonight. There are many things you teach your grandchildren, but have you ever considered that they might be able to teach you a thing or two? You may understand this concept, but few people are actually open to learning new things from anyone, let alone children. The truth is that children can be our best teachers, and they do this in several ways. On the practical side, kids can truly teach us some useful things. Are you trying to learn about computers? Hmm. The whole idea of computers may be frustrating to you, but today's children have grown ups grown up with computers, and to many, using a computer is as easy as riding a bicycle was to you. Why not take advantage of that? Your grandchildren want to please you and show off what they know at the same time. Asking them to teach you something is a perfect way for them to do this. You'll learn something useful and acquire a means to relate to your grandchildren on their level as well. Grandchildren might also teach you something about yourself. Kids' tendency to speak out and comment on everything from the weather to your behavior may be more than a bit revealing. A testy little voice could actually call your attention to a behavioral quirk that, upon reflection, you may decide could stand some adjustment. Your first tendency may be to be defensive or brush off the comment because it came from the mouths of babes. But consider that because it came from a child and a fresh viewpoint, it might hold some validity. This isn't to say that everything a child blurts out should be cause for deep reflection, but as with so many things, you can often find pearls amongst the grains of sand. More importantly, grandchildren can teach you life lessons that they won't even know they're teaching you. Patience, understanding, living in the present moment, considering new ideas, and the all-important concept of unconditional love are just a few of the things that you'll learn from your grandchildren through the time you spend together and the experiences that you share. The key is to be open to receiving these lessons. You must remember to look for and find the lessons in whatever the experience may be, positive or negative. You can always learn something new. Try letting your grandchildren be your teachers and see if you don't all feel closer and more loving because of it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, principal of Currituck County Middle School, Michelle Cowan, will introduce who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening. This is Dalton Gay. Okay, would everyone please rise? <clears throat> I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our school spotlight this month is on Curita County Middle School, and I will keep it with Ms. Cohen. Good evening, Dr. Dobney, members of the board, Mr. Stefanik. I'm Michelle Cowan. Tuck County Middle School, and it is my honor and privilege to um, share our school spotlight tonight. Um, a teacher at our school, Chris Pinto, has a passion, a game, a game that uh, promotes um, problem solving, critical thinking, and enhances education as well. So with that, I'm going to introduce to you Chris Pinto. Thank you very much, Ms. Cowan. Good evening, board members. And thank you so much that we have this opportunity to share our chess program at Curry Tuck County Middle School. We have about 20 players on our team. Um, they meet once a week after school and train for about an hour. They practice at home using uh, online resources. And we go to tournaments about once a month. So far, we've been to two different tournaments. The first one, our students just got their feet wet and did a great job just starting off. This past tournament, out of 52 players, our school ended up winning out of about six different schools that were represented. And this was a great start for the program. But beyond the aspect of winning and losing, just the benefits of chess are so widespread. 
and my students are here to represent the school. This is not the whole team, but about eight of the 20 who are here to share some of the research on the benefits of chess. So if they'll please come up and help present some of these benefits, and hopefully we can convince every school and anybody representing a school to start a chess program of their own. The intellectual, the intellectual benefits of chess, according to research, is that it offers statistically significant increases in reading as measured by standardized test scores. Also, mathematics as measured by, standing, by standardized test scores. It helps with visual and spatial reasoning. It helping increases critical thinking skills. It improves our IQ score. It uses problem solving. It uses... I'm sorry. It uses the problem-solving ability and creativity. And it improves your memory and mental stamina. My name is Dalton. This is the social and emotional benefits of competitive chess. It increases confidence. It improves focus and time management. It helps members experience being on a team. It also builds resilience. It teaches self-advocacy. And it rewards the patience of the player. It makes critical thinking into a game. It also reinforces the benefits of our study. I'm Adam Kanzer, a sixth grade member of the chess team, and uh, some uh, some the comparisons of the chess team and the chess club are that the team competes regularly in tournaments, and uh, and they train intentionally, so and they emphasize on getting better, and it, it can prepare students for test-like uh, scenarios. I'm Luke Constantino, a sixth grade member of the chess team, and I'm going to talk about the chess clubs. For the chess club, we don't have competitions. We just meet at lunch and play. It's social and lighthearted, and we don't emphasize on improving how we play chess. Hello, I'm Amanda Grayson from the sixth grade, and I'm talk here to talk about which either the chess team or club is right for your school. Both the teams and the clubs offer student benefits, and it helps open up your eyes to a brand new perspective. And CCMS has an after-school team dedicated to competition, as well as a club that meets during lunch or a casual play. Hello, I'm Joshua Forbes from Kirtuck County Middle School in the sixth grade. And I am here to talk about which either a chess team or a chess club would be right for your school. And many students who may not feel ready for competitive play can still learn or play chess in a club setting. And competitions push, competition pushes students to improve and play their best. Which students should play chess? Research shows benefits for all student populations that engage in chess. There really isn't a type, but one of the kinds of students who could play chess are gifted students. Another type is exceptional students. And at risk students. The minority of students. You can be male or female. Or you can be an athlete. Speaking of which, we have several athletes in the chess team just with us right now. Can raise your hands. As well as musicians, and we also have several musicians on our chess team. If we could all raise our hands. <laughs> Here are a few images of the CCMS chess team in tournaments, and here you actually have to write down what your moves you put down, and you use a timer to log how long you have. How long do you have? Um, depends on what you're doing. Like, sometimes you could play for five minutes or three minutes, where at normal tournaments, you usually play for around 40 minutes. And here's another image of the, uh, the chess team in tournaments. And so, yeah. 
These are some pictures of the chess club we played during lunch. This is just sixth grade. So these, are, these people are just meeting up to have fun and play and talk about it. <coughs> We have several students that play the chess, on the chess team, and here are some of their perspectives on the chess team. They find it is fun and challenging to learn. They also like being able to compete. It teaches them a new way of thinking. And being on the team pushes them. They, they find it fun to teach their friends how to play. And they find it that it helps them sharpen themselves intellectually. And they plan to keep playing chess for a long time. So thank you very much for hearing our uh, benefits presentation. I have here a link to research, so I can um, send this presentation to you all or to whomever. And there's a hyperlink there to all the uh, Google Drive folder that has the research articles that I compiled, so you can kind of look through them and see more of what there is to offer beyond what we just presented, as well as a guide to starting a team, kind of step-by-step step that I put together, and my contact information in case any teachers and principals would like information on how to get started, how to get their students ready for competition, or just have a casual club and want any tips on it. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And before... <laughs> Before the students sit down, have them all come up to the microphone there and say their name good and loud. Wyatt Spencer. Luke Constantino. Adam Kinzer. Annabelle Grayson. Dalton Gay. Joshua Forbes. Lucy Chapel. Bella Thomas. Oh, thank you all. We really appreciate that. <laughs> Mr. Pinto, come back up. I stopped into Mr. Pinto's class last week and got to see these uh, the roll-up mats that don't roll into uh, chess boards that the kids use at lunch. My one question is, do any of them get to play against you? Yes. Occasionally they'll ask me, and um, at lunchtime I'll occasionally play some of them. Also, they'll start games with me online, so I can, any of them could play me, I mean all of them could play at the same time really, because it's uh, turn-based, so you can play like a move every week if you want to, you don't have to play all at once. But um, they do, and they're starting to give me more of a run for my money. And <laughs> my goal is always, within a year or two, to get them to where they can beat me. And then hopefully eventually to where they will be me regularly. That's Michael. And you said you were going to take some, is it this year, to the state competition? Yes, we have four students, um, actually a couple more, I think about six from Curry Tuck Middle who are planning on going to Charlotte where this year there's a um, NCK through 12 chess championship. They hold it every year. There's about 600 kids from around the state that go. And our kids are going to have an awesome experience. It's a really, really cool thing for them to do. And while it's competitive, They'll be playing over two days. They'll play four games on Saturday, um, two hours apiece. So they'll play eight hours worth of chess on Saturday, get up the next day and do another six hours, and then wow. we'll head home from Charlotte. So it's a very grueling event. It's very long and hard, but I think they're going to have an awesome time. And no matter how many wins or losses they have, they're going to really cherish the experience. Great. Well, I, I think it speaks volumes that they go at their lunchtime and their free time to to practice and, and to enjoy the game. They do. And uh, beyond that, they really, it's a game, but they are working at it. Yeah. Even when they're playing casually just over lunch, they're playing to win. Strategies. They're using their strategies. They're burning more calories than if you work out. Your, <laughs> your brain burns so many calories when you play chess. So they really do take it seriously even when they're having fun. <laughs> what do you teach, <laughs> Mr. Penta? I teach sixth and seventh grade English. English. Yes. Did any of them know how to play prior to joining the club? I always kind of liken it to basketball. People will say they know how to play, but knowing how to dribble and knowing how to shoot is not the same as being a basketball player. So all of them will say they know how to play, and right. they, they do. But there's inevitably rules that they haven't learned yet, and strategy is a foreign concept, and tactics doesn't mean anything yet. So once they start learning those things, then they're really playing, and then it's a lot more fun too. That's Did awesome. you tell any of my idea for your lunchtime games? <laughs> Refresh me. <laughs> I said, 
replace the pieces on the board with oh, the yeah. pawns with a carrot or something, and then when they get taken, they have to eat the carrot? I think it's That genius. way they get a healthy lunch. I think it's a great idea. I'd like to thank you. Um, I'm sure that they're going to reap a lot of rewards, and thank you for implementing that. Thank game. you very much, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We really appreciate it, Mr. Pinto. It was a pleasure meeting with you all. Thank and good you. luck to the students at the state. Thank you. Uh, next, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on the agenda? Okay, since I have a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, agenda is approved. Uh, first item, uh, J.P. Knapp accreditation recognition, Superintendent Stefanik. Thank you, Dr. Dobney. Uh, Dr. Dobney, uh, board members and guests in the audience. Uh, last year, uh, the Board of Education uh, asked our uh, um, two high schools to uh, um, pursue um, accreditation status. And uh, uh, I'm pleased to announce that on uh, January 4th uh, this year, I received an email from the State Department of Education saying that uh, J.P. Knapp uh, met all the criteria and uh, is fully accredited um, by the uh, state of North Carolina. So. Uh, We're going to take this opportunity to uh, uh, publicly recognize uh, J.P. Knapp for its accomplishments and uh, like to ask uh, uh, Principal uh, Bass Knight to come forward and uh, we can present him with a uh, plaque uh, commemorating this event and uh, we can congratulate the whole staff at that time. Thank you, Principal Bass Knight and staff. Great job done. Principal Bass Knight, is Knapp Early College High School still the only school in the Northeast that's rated A? Uh, there was one school in that district that's a little side of us. Oh, Thank our God. neighbors <laughs> to the <laughs> south? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Congratulations to everybody. Okay, next item, National Board Certified Teacher Recognition. Christy Hodges, Instructional Coach. Good evening, Board Chair Dr. Dobney, Vice Chair Ms. Kraft, Board Members, Student Board Members, and Superintendent Mr. Stefanik. North Carolina ranks number one in the nation with over 21,000 National Board Certified Teachers in our state. This year, 616 North Carolina teachers earned National Board Certification, and an additional 890 renewed their certification. Tonight, I have the honor of recognizing two educators in our district who have earned the distinction of National Board Certified Teacher and one who has renewed her certification. Tricia Richardson, who could not be with us this evening, initially certified in the area of English Language Arts in 2007 and renewed this year. She currently teaches third grade at Griggs Elementary School. She would like to share this. National Boards is a pathway to self-improvement. It makes you truly reflect upon your teaching by asking yourself, am I being effective? How can I improve my teaching? Are my students truly growing and eager to learn more? Are my students, it's a, con excuse me, it's a constant reflection upon yourself and wanting to become a better 
teacher. This year marks her 18th year as an educator. Pam White, who's with me tonight, and Carly Osmond both earned their National Board certification this year. Carly earned her National Board certification as an early childhood generalist, and she could not be here, but she wanted me to share the following. I was most influenced by my mother to become a teacher and commit myself to lifelong learning. My mom was a National Board certified teacher, and I am so happy to have earned this honor. I will continue to pursue more opportunities throughout my teaching career to become more knowledgeable in my teaching practice. I sincerely thank my students, parents, colleagues, friends, family, and others for their support as I earn this certification. Ms. Osmond teaches at Jarvisburg Elementary School. Pam White earned her National Board certification in Early Adolescence English Language Arts. Ms. White shares, out of all the professional development sessions I have attended in 23 years of teaching, achieving my National Board certification has been the most impactful. It has made me a better teacher overall because it has caused me to reflect on what I do in my classroom. I now find myself reflecting on my practice constantly and making the necessary adjustments and improvements as needed. National Boards challenge me to take an honest look at my teaching practices and question why I do the things I do in the classroom. As a result, my teaching practices have vastly improved. For the two years it took me to go through this process, I was immersed in teaching standards and best practices. As a result, my teaching practices have been strengthened, which has resulted in increased student success. Working on my national boards was one of the most challenging things I ever had to do, but I can say with all honesty that the pain, sweat, and the many, many tears were all worth it. Congratulations, Ms. White. In closing, I'd like to thank the board for your continued support of national boards and your desire to grow uh, national board teachers in our district. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. White. Ms. White, <clears throat> you got your certification in early adolescence? English language arts. English yes. language arts, okay. Where do you teach and what do you teach? Boy out in middle. Oh, okay, great. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next item, teacher performance bonus recognition. Renee Doughty, Assistant Superintendent. Good evening, Dr. Dobney, members of the board, Superintendent Stefanik. It's my pleasure to come before you this evening to recognize some of the many outstanding educators here in Curry Tuck County. For the 2017-18 school year, the state legislature expanded the teacher performance bonuses to include fourth and fifth grade reading, as well as fourth through eighth grade math. Teachers in third grade reading were already eligible to receive bonuses, as were CTE teachers and AP teachers. For a teacher in grades three through eight to be eligible to receive a bonus, they had to meet the following criteria. They must have taught in Curry Tuck County reading and or math the previous school year, rank in the top 25% of the state or and or the top 25% of the LEA based on EVA scores in the subject they taught and still be teaching in Currituck County this school year. Please join me in recognizing the following educators for their outstanding performance in grades three through eight reading and or math. I'll ask them to please come forward and stand in front of you. Annette Markham, third grade reading, top 25% in the state and the LEA. Terry <laughs> Dover, third grade reading, top 25% in the state and the LEA. <laughs> Helen Taylor, third grade reading, top 25% in the state and the LEA. <laughs> Chris Winstead, third grade reading, top 25% in the state and the LEA. Katrina Costello, fourth grade reading, top 25% in the state and the LEA. <laughs> Stephanie Sanderlin, fourth grade reading, top 25% in the state and LEA. 
Christina Melendez, fourth grade reading, top 25% in the state and the LEA. Amy <laughs> Philbrook, fourth grade reading, top 25% in the state. <laughs> Leanne Heflin, fourth grade reading, top 25% in the state. Jeannie Philbrook again, fourth grade math, top 25% in the state and the LEA. <laughs> Beth Williams, fourth grade math, top 25% in the LEA. <laughs> Donna McLeod, fourth grade math, top 25% in the LEA. <laughs> Leanne Heflin, fifth grade reading, top 25% in the state and LEA. Ashley Nixon, 5th grade math, top 25%, the LEA. <laughs> Stephanie Newpert, 5th grade math, top 25%, in the LEA. <laughs> Banks, 6th grade math, top 25%, in the state, and LEA. <laughs> Bill Swimmy, 6th grade math, top 25%, in the state, and LEA. Jennifer Powell, 7th grade math, top 25% in the state and LEA. Karen Gazinski, 7th grade math, top 25% in the state. Ashley Potter, 8th grade math, top 25% in the state and LEA. And Betty McLeod, 8th grade math, top 25% in the state. If we could give these staff members, I'm asking you to stay put so I can get a picture, a round of applause. <laughs> I'll get you to scoot together, get a picture after Mr. Stefanik shakes hands. Hmm. All right, if I can get you to get a front row and a back row together. Take your picture. <laughs> Perfect. All right. One, two, three. Congratulations again. Just for while they're taking their seats so that the community knows, some of the bonuses for teachers that were awarded both top 25% in the state and top 25% in the LEA were upwards of $6,500 for each teacher. Oh. Teachers who teach advanced placement courses developed by the College Board are also eligible to receive bonuses if... They taught an AP course the previous academic school year and are still currently teaching in the same LEA. AP teachers are awarded bonuses based on their students who score a level three or above on the AP exam. Please join me in recognizing the following AP teachers for receiving AP bonuses. Ms. Claire Vinnick for AP Studio Art. <laughs> Cherry Folks, AP Biology. Deb Butler for AP Calculus. Kim Malwini, AP Chemistry. Mary Person for AP Literature. Robert Griffin for AP Stats. Jarvis for AP Gov. Where's Claire? Come up, Claire. Oh, there she is. Unfortunately, two of them came down with the flu bug, and so they weren't able to join us this evening. But, Claire, if you'll come on up front, you still deserve to be up there. <laughs> and again, these teachers receive $50 for each student who scored at a level three or above on the AP exam. Thank you, Claire. Way to go, Claire. And finally, career and technical education teachers who taught a course the previous year in which students could earn an industry certification or credential are also available, eligible to earn a 
teacher performance bonus. CTE teachers are awarded bonuses for each industry certification or credential that their students attain. Please join me in, well, in recognizing the following CTE teachers. Cameron Bolton, Microsoft Word and PowerPoint certifications. <laughs> Ralph Lang, ServeSafe certifications. Jeff Rhodes, NCCER certifications, which stands for National Center for Construction, Education, and Research. And Elizabeth DeWitt from Microsoft Word and PowerPoint certifications. Please give these teachers another round of applause. Again, Curry Tech County Schools are proud of the, these educators tonight who qualified and were recognized for their legislative bonuses. And we appreciate all the work that every single educator does here in Curry Tech County Schools. Congratulations to everyone that received a performance bonus. Okay, next item, public comment session. And nobody signed up. Next item, career and technical education letter. Okay, I'd like to call uh, Ms. Dowdy up to the uh, podium You know, while I'm reading this. I don't know how many people saw <laughs> President Trump's State of the Union message, but in the State of the Union message, he made the statement, let's invest in job training that we need so badly. Let's open great vocational schools so our future workers can learn a craft and realize their full potential. And I thought, well, now we have the president that's really supporting career and technical education. And then Ms. Dowdy, you know, found something from our state superintendent. And if you could just you sure. know, add to that. Absolutely. State Superintendent Mark Johnson recently uh, created a uh, educator survey called the North Carolina Educators Perspective Survey where he is seeking feedback on the priorities that they are working on in Raleigh and February survey that was just released was on post-secondary options for students in North Carolina specifically asking questions like at the very least what do you think most students in North, North Carolina should have when they finish high school a high school diploma some post-secondary education a credential or certification program or a four-year university degree it also asks questions like, what, when should we start discussing, discussing with students post-secondary options at the elementary level, the middle, middle school level, or the high school level? Um, they're working hard with My Future NC to talk about what that looks like for North Carolina students, recognizing that not everyone needs a four-year degree to be successful, but still wanting to make sure that the rigor is there for all students so that they all enter the workforce or career field or post-secondary school prepared for whatever's next. Thank you. And I thought now is the right time that we could request or write a letter to the uh, State Board of Education, our representative, uh, Becky Taylor, and to uh, the State Superintendent, Mark Johnson, asking them to take uh, a further look at having a career and technical education track in the, at the state. Because right now we have a one-size-fits-all diploma. Everybody that graduates from high school has to be able to go to you know, UNC Chapel Hill, and that's, that's just not right. You know, we're losing students out of our high school because, you know, some of them literally can't, you know, meet those qualifications, yet if given the opportunity, they could become, you know, licensed in anything in the CTE field. And so we need to give them an opportunity, you know, to succeed. <coughs> so I've asked, uh, you know, Renee, on behalf of the Board of Education, if nobody has any objection to write a letter to the state superintendent and the state board of education representative and state board of ed, you know, from the uh, Creta County Board of Ed, requesting that they relook at the, you know, vocational track, you know, the way it used to be back in, was it 2008, 2009? I think it was when we met with um, 
State Board Representative Becky Taylor, we had talked about it, it used, used to, to exist, exist that North Carolina had diploma tracks that students right. could fall into. Um, and then we got away when the push came for college and career, well, it was college ready at that point in time, not college and career ready. And now we're seeing that shift back into both college and career ready. And so I think it would be our hope that as we switched and recognized that students don't just need a four-year university degree to be successful and enter the workforce, and have a lot of debt not on their shoulders to burden, the burden to carry, that we also look at n not having this one-size-fits-all model for a high school diploma, that we recognize that not every student has to get to that diploma the same route and be successful. Well, and, you know, the statistics that we were given by the county, you know, the uh, planning board said that we're going to have 200 to 250 housing starts in Curry Tuck per year for the next 20 years. Well, right now... We don't have anybody, or they're aging out, you know, that works on HVAC, plumbing, electrical, you know, masonry. And just in my development, we have seven new housing starts on my street alone. And you go by that and you look at the license plates on the vehicles, most of them are coming out of Virginia to work on the houses being built in Curry Talk. And, you know, this way we could give our, you know, kids a meaningful occupation. They could become you know, productive members of, you know, Curry Tuck County, you know, make a good wage, so. I would also like to ask Renee if she could send it to President Trump and tell him that we were paying attention to the State of the Union address. That's um, a good idea. And see if we get a response. Tell him that we are trying to implement some of these things that he discussed and on a, a local level, state level, federal level, and see if we do get a response. Absolutely. We have talked with commissioners about expanding our programs, and uh, so certainly I agree. I think the time's right. We've watched a pendulum swing, as we all do in education, that it, go, it starts over here and then it goes all the way to the other side, and now it's kind of swinging back okay. in the middle, recognizing that there is not a one-size-fits-all. And so when we continue to push that all students have to have this, this, and this to graduate, and that determines their level of success, it's really not, it's not personalization. Mm -hmm. And so Mark Johnson's uh, video led with that he's all about the push for, push for personalization. And so that means that that one-size-fits-all model, that they're contradictory. You can't have one and then the other. They right. have to be able, you have to personalize, which means it may look different for some students. I really wish we could have a personal talk with, you know, Mark Johnson, the state superintendent, and the state board, if at all that would be possible. Well, I'll try to get a response from Trump, and maybe we can see if we can get it. <laughs> there you okay. go. There you go. Aim high. Thank you. Does the board have any qualms about her composing this letter? Or? No, I, no, That's I think it's great. Great idea. I, I'm um, not opposed to composing a letter. I'd um, like to see it before it's sent. If okay, possible. that's I was going to suggest that she I, send I, it to. I, I want to see uh, what we're requesting before it's sent. Um, I do not think that one size fits all. However, um, I do believe that if you want to be the master of most of these trades you're referencing, there's some rigor in licensing. In order to have a journeyman's or a master card, there's going to be certain things that you're going to have to be able to do to pass those tests anyways. So a lot of the stuff that we were already requiring by the state is going to be required to excel to those levels. So, I'm, I, look, I, I've always worked with my hands, and it's not always the easiest way. But certainly if you have some qualifications, it'll make it go a lot easier. I just want to make sure that um, we're not just giving them a piece of paper that lets them be a help her for the rest of the life. That's all. I want to make sure they can make a decent wage. Really? Thank you. So could you send that uh, perspective letter to all the board since it's coming from, you know, us? Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda, the 2017-18 Curita County Schools calendar revision. Superintendent Stefanik. Thank you, Dr. Dobney. Board members, uh, like deja vu all over again. Uh, we had this conversation at the January uh, board meeting. Um, we have um, fallen below uh, the uh, 1,025 hours uh, that is the state minimum for instructional hours for students uh, in a North Carolina uh, public school. Um, currently, we sit at uh, 1,016 hours 
and uh, you've got a PowerPoint uh, in paper form, but it's also up on the screen. Uh, we're at 1,016 hours, so uh, quick math um, says that we're nine hours uh, below the uh, uh, the state minimum. Um, when we did some surveys um, throughout our schools, um, our um, high achieving staff, they want to add an hour to every day for the rest of the school year. Um, I think that's aiming a little bit too high. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, you look up at the screen and um, put this chart together, um, adding a few minutes uh, to every day, uh, because at the last meeting there was conversation about trying to protect uh, as many of the early release days or the teacher work days that were uh, left in the calendar. So we put together a chart. If we added some minutes to the day, what would that turn into? So giving ourselves time to communicate whatever decision is made tonight, we'll say that the change would start next Monday. And from next Monday till the end of the school year, there are 74 uh, days of school. So if you add five minutes to every day, that creates a grand total of 370 minutes. Round it off a little bit, and you come up with about six hours uh, worth of minutes. Um, add it to the 1,016, that gives us 1,022, so we still haven't made it uh, to the state minimum by just adding five minutes for the rest of the school year. 10 minutes, 740, divided out roughly 12 hours. Uh, that gets you to 1,028, creates three hours of makeup time, i.e., one delayed start uh, of, of three hours, and then we're back to the 1,025. Um, add 15 minutes to the day, get 1,110 minutes, um, roughly 18.5 uh, hours, uh, and uh, add it to 1,016, you get 1,034 and a half, about nine hours of makeup time or one and a half school days. And then the last one, which is the one that uh, uh, created the most feedback, uh, 20 minutes uh, added to each day gives you 1,480 minutes, uh, basically 24 and a half hours, takes you to 1,040.5, creates 15 hours of makeup time or two and a half days, either taken in daily increments or late starts. Um, now, we also have in the rest of the school year, one more click, Ms. Jones. We still have four early release days remaining. And if you would change any of those two full days of school, uh, that uh, uh, picks you up three hours um, per early release day transition to a full day of school. Now, I'll caution two of the four early release days. One of them is the Friday of Memorial Day weekend. And for safety reasons, I would say we probably leave that one as an early release day. And the last one is the last day of school, which is a Friday in June. And uh, there could be some uh, significant traffic uh, on that day as well. So if you take those two out, we have two other early release days um, left in the second semester. And we have one work day, and the work day falls on primary day, uh, election day in May. <coughs> Excuse me. We just added that uh, back in the fall when we realized it was left off our calendar. Um, I heard a lot of feedback about this that um, from staff um, that uh, uh, you know there, there's not uh, the concern that some from the community have expressed in the past about uh, having school and um, running an election in the gym or uh, wherever at the same time. Uh, so that's another option that would give you um, six hours uh, if you put that back into a school day. So just a quick example of uh, uh, mixing things together. Not my recommendation because there's all kinds of recommendations that could come off of this, so I'm just leaving it open for a discussion for the board. If you took two early release days, you pick up six hours, get you back to 1,022. Then if you look at the chart, you add 10 minutes to the day, you pick up about uh, uh, 12 more hours that gets you up to about 1,034 hours, and so you'd have more than uh, one day's worth of makeup time um, to uh, uh, head into the, into the spring. The last click, again, just as a, um, there were some concerns when uh, 20 minutes uh, was added to either end of the day that in some buildings it would either create a very, very early morning uh, for some folks uh, uh, getting on the bus, and um, although, 
wasn't the accurate time, they were worried about how late um, some of the buses, uh, uh, some predictions had, uh, you know, the last student being dropped off at 6 o'clock. It wouldn't quite get that late, but uh, uh, 20 minutes on, it would get you close to 5.30 uh, for the last student being dropped off at Moyuck Middle. Is that a correct early pickup time for Shawboro, 5.40? Yes, we've got uh, um, uh, we've got some students uh, uh, through McKinney Vento that uh, are outside of the the Shawboro attendance line, uh, and they get picked up that early. So they've got about an hour and uh, or almost a two hour uh, bus trip to get to school. Why is that? Because they chose to go to a school that they're outside. They're, they're homeless. They're yeah, they're homeless. Um, yeah, so they uh, the at this particular time they're outside the uh, the Shawboro boundary, and so uh, we go and pick them up. And yes, ma'am, we have to provide transportation. We couldn't maybe make that bus, as I like to refer to a deficiency model that they call an efficiency model, make that a shorter time form, make it a little bit more de deficient. It's based on where they live. Is that and they get to choose the school they want to go to. Is it a bus yes. or a car? No, it's a bus. It's a, it's a beginning of a row. We, we could do all kinds of arrangements, yes. Mm. Oh. Just 5.40 to... 7.30. I, I, I don't know the, the actual to number. 410s. Yeah. A long time. That's for tough that. for a kindergartner. That's tough. Yeah. I like giving them a word of uh, the two early release days and the one work day. Just go for it and get it all back and not tack on five minutes and six minutes or 20 minutes and act like that's really going to help anybody's education. That's where I'm at. Well, I know we've gone to school with primary, on primary voting days. Um, if it were a regular, I mean, if it was a November election, I, I would be opposed to that. But I use it as a teaching tool when I... When we went, when I taught, of course. Well, we that day will probably be a heavier day for people to go yeah, to the well, election maybe. because we're going to have a lot of contested races. And mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, Karen remembers how many years ago was that that Moyak Elementary, the people up there really. Well, that, that's a unique situation yeah. because it's so hard. Um, they <clears throat> vote in the gym, so. In the largest township. And that's where they drop off kids. Parent dropped off SAR now. Am I, am I right? Yes. Parent dropped off SAR. But since the gym's disconnected, we would, we would be fine. We'd be fine? Yeah. And in fact, we would have staff members for once it expressed. We were like one of those. Go ahead, Jake. That would be, it would be conducive. So the people coming in to vote could like stay out of the way of parents dropping off the kids? And where would you drop them off? Probably be rolling in if it was going to be heavy at all, and the school would be closed. And I understand that you're not going to run them through the building, but you're still going to run them down that sidewalk, and that's where the voters. Yes, the drop off would be the only concern right there first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. That would be the and pick up in the afternoon. I've heard from several parents, grandparents, and faculty members, and they were in favor of adding minutes, but not 20. Any other? So if we do, are these the two work days that we had already voted on? I mean, half days that we had already voted on? No, these are extra ones. The, the last recommendation that we made put us to about 1,035, and the last storm took us from 1,035 down to 1,016. Have anything except the half days before Easter break and before Memorial Day. Is that correct? No, you have, you've got, uh, yes, but, well, you've got one before Easter break. You've got one uh, in the 20s of April which is a Wednesday, you've got the one at Memorial Day, and you've got the last day of school. So three Fridays and a Wednesday. 
in an election Wednesday, day. I'd be okay with. The Fridays, I just don't think that's a good idea. <coughs> I think you're putting kids on, on buses at a time when you've got heavy traffic. Well, he's talking about the two... Yeah, uh, the the other one would be uh, the other one would be the uh, half day right before spring break. Good yeah. Friday. I don't know about traffic on that day. Well, More the one on talking about one Good Friday. Friday. Mm, one was the Wednesday. The, the Wednesday and the Friday. The yeah. Wednesday is that like uh, parent conference day? Yeah, early release team meetings. I see. Just team time. They give us the exact dates of the four early release days that are remaining. March 30th. Here, right? Hey, wait a minute. March 30th. Uh -huh. April 25th. May 25th. And June 8th. Is June 8th graduation? Yes. Yes, yes. but it's also... We already started renting cottages at the beach. I mean, I think they will be for Easter break, too, myself, but. Good Friday is usually pretty hectic. Mm -hmm. Well, how about, how about the, the, the. Just a reminder, how, how, this is elementary and middle school calendars we're dealing with. Okay. How, how about, how, here's one. How about um, primary and leave the two um, or the three uh, half days and pick up a Saturday? There's two full days. Well, Saturdays, we've, we haven't Maybe had that Saturday. a lot, but that when we, we have had it a couple of times, and the attendance was not only that, not you good. can only do it on a day that's a four day week. Yeah. You can't do it, you can't send them to school six days. The only day you could do that is the April, which that I mean is the um, May one. Yeah, I see where the work day is. Yeah. So we can pick up the Saturday at 12. Right. Or June second. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I just don't think. I, I just count. Just count forty weeks. That's all. Just count forty weeks. <laughs> and actually, Lori, I've got to, Lori, I've got to ask you. Well, can if there's I say, a holiday, are you still allowed to do a Saturday <laughs> in place of a holiday, or does that count as a does that count as work time? Okay. Well, we can knock June second off because the tests have already had been in effect. The tests have already been taken on June second, right? No. Well, we're surely no, not going to test on window, June second. The window would still be open, I think. Well, we're not going to test on Saturday. I know for sure. I, I was just counting four day weeks. I know. So. Hey, where do these four early release days and the one work day? How many hours does that take us to? Eighteen. Well, suppose you it would did be an extra day and a half minutes. on the books. Suppose you did ten minutes and took the April early release day. That would give That'd us be 15 about hours. Six hours. That gives you a thousand, thousand thirty-one. That'd give you a one-day make-up time. I mean, we may Th have then you could put a provision out there that if you had a missed day, that would create a four-day okay. week, and then you could go that very next Saturday if you wanted to do that. I think that's that makes. Saturdays were second most popular on the, the survey. Spring break days. Spring break was were, like it's, untouchable. It's unmentionable, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So you're talking about the 25th in April? I'm talking about going 10 extra minutes a day, which you're adding to math or reading or, or something, not just 10 minutes, just a fluff, and then taking the half day on in April, and that gives you... Um, six hours 28 it gives you a little bit of, it gives you a day is what mark said right the three the three hours from the the early release day would take you up to 1031 and then putting in the provision that if we miss any more school because of snow or bad weather that we would go on that saturday 
do we need to put that provision in or can we come back and add more minutes? well it's just nice that they would know it right up front and then there wouldn't be any yeah you could come back and and add more minutes but you couldn't you couldn't come back and discuss the Saturday because then you would have missed unless you luck out and it's on a board meeting week <laughs> you would miss the four-day week um, so if you put the Saturday out there people would just know it was coming I just I, I don't think Saturday is a good idea <laughs> and I know that we can't control the weather and we have to go a certain well, number of hours so. that one would be based on if we had more bad weather and had already used up the extra six hours and we had already used up the extra six hours. And over the last six years, you've had just about everything as far as second semester weather goes. The last two years, you've had very mild winters, and we've missed no time. But then the two years right before that, one year you missed 70 hours, 10 days of school and a, an early release or a late start or something. Um, and then the year before that, you missed another 30 hours, and that's just all second semester. Um, so it's, it's you, you, uh, uh, Farmer's Almanac, I don't know, uh, you know, it, uh, you just don't know what the second semester is going to bring you weather-wise. So, oh, excuse me, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, to me, it's always easier to just announce that an early release day is going to become a full day. So if you're going to add minutes and you do need the extra time towards the end of the year, you got March, April, you know, May, and just tell the parents, you know, we're going to have the early release day. We're going to make it a full day. Rather than a Saturday. Too. Yeah, if you don't use them up here tonight, you have those. Yeah. So if we just took the primary day for the moment then, that hey. would give us enough time. I'm just really worried about no, that. No, it, it would take us to, that would take us to 1,022. <coughs> uh, it would not get us to 1,025 just picking up six hours. So taking the 25th of April and the primary day will put us over to Mark. Three hours. Okay. So we're into Which three. is what 10 minutes does. Yeah, but 10 no, minutes. No, the, the, pri the primary day and one early release day would take you right to 1,025. You wouldn't have any cushion. Right. So. And, and cushion is just, again, it's just what I'm used to is having a little bit of buffer in there so you don't have to keep coming back and talking yeah. about it. If you don't want to, then you could just make them up as you go. JPNAP doesn't, it's not involved in this. Okay, so the They're only not involved in this, but I've got an extra, I've got an extra um, recommendation for them. The only school then, the only two schools, no, Griggs, Griggs, Moyoc, and... Shawborough are the are the three elementaries, right? That have voting have happening. Voting. Yeah. Deb, is there voting at Knotts Island? No. no? Okay. Nap is. Nap's the other one. Nap has voting. And are they going that day or? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there's there's is a completely detached gym, and so they can they can really close theirs off. <clears throat> and lots of parking. And what did the survey show? Again, refresh my memory on the survey. What what were they? Survey was was seventy five percent on the survey was add time to the day. Um, the second one was go Saturdays, and the uh, last place ten percent or less was mm -hmm. stay away from my spring break. Uh, you know, as as grabbing those day as full day makeup days. Now again, what people said on the seventy five percent for adding time. They weren't planning on 20 minutes right. with some of those responses I received. And the other one was if it was 20 minutes, they didn't believe there'd be 20 minutes for the whole second semester. Well, that's an option, too, mm -hmm. that we could stop it once we got to. Right. And then if we had to go, you know, if we saw that we were. Right. But, well, and uh, and, and, and uh, to piggyback off of what uh, Mr. Kratik has said a couple times, um, five minutes it's it, that's bookkeeping uh, in my in my opinion 10 minutes if you're good uh, you can get some some extra practice time in there but the reason 20 minutes came up was you can get something done uh, in 20 minutes whether it's uh, intervention work or whether it's um, you know a, a, a quick quick reminder lesson or a retouch on on some standard that's where 20 minutes came from 
Um, I think, though, that the idea of those that are saying 10 minutes is not a standalone lesson, but adding an additional 10 minutes to your math lesson or, sure, uh, you sure. know, your daily five or whatever they're working on. So I, I don't think anybody feels they can get much done if you stand alone. have put a survey out and you've gotten 75% of the people saying that adding minutes is the best thing to do, then if you don't listen to what they're saying, then the next time we do a survey, they won't see the point of filling out the survey. Because did you, you're did not you hear from everybody? Anyway. Did you hear from half their people? We, um, last time I checked, it was just, it was just shy of 1,000 uh, respondents, and that wasn't just to staff, that was to staff and parents. Um, you know, it just opened up, and we've never, in the years I've been here, the other surveys we put out or any other questions we put out, I've never received a thousand answers, you know, uh, on surveys. Now, when we went to the schools, the schools had, some of the schools had Google Docs, some of the schools did a, a staff meeting conversation, and when they were, they were out there talking about it, it was, you know, we could give up some early release days, and add they, they were the suggestions were ten minutes, five minutes, and I think one building went as high as fifteen minutes. Um, nobody was really excited about twenty minutes, but we had a couple buildings say if we did do twenty minutes, then they would like it bookended, you know ten minutes added to the beginning, ten minutes added to the end, and then it doesn't make anything too early and doesn't make anything too late. So you're saying we could add fifteen minutes, and if we get to Easter and we're good to go, or if we get to May 1st and we're good to go, then we can stop the 15 minutes? If that's, if that's the board's pleasure, yes. What would that do? Can, can I just ask, are these pick-up and drop-off times that you got here from the six elementary schools and the two middle schools? Mm -hmm. The earliest pick-up time and the latest drop-off time, is that currently, or is that assuming that there's been some minutes added somewhere that I'm not understanding? No, this is where it stands right now. Okay, so I'm looking at some of these schools currently without adding anything to their day for 10 plus hours already, right? Not necessarily because the earliest one gets on is probably the earliest one that gets off. Is that right, Mark? That used to be how it was. Get on lay at last. Well, he's just talking about the, the, yeah, those no, times. But yeah. But not, right. it's well, not let's for take off, Let's that. take off that. Right. 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 Let's, right. let's assume. Yeah, seven to seven to so, four thirty. You know, if you get picked up an hour early, and that's the earliest pickup, you should be the earliest. Eleven drop and off. a half hours. I know they do that at at Knotts Island. Yeah. The person that gets picked up last gets dropped off. They first. might do that now. That hasn't been always the way it's been. However, I did think that a lot of people earlier in the year, um, made a lot of comments. And I think they made some adjustments. But anyhow, my point is, they they they. they they're on the bus for a good portion of the day, oh. and not all of them, but a fair amount of them. And I'm not wanting to add any minutes to the day. I'd rather add a piece of a day or a whole day that they could actually benefit from. I just, for me, it's, it's just, once again, the numbers on the paper, when they hit the road, they look good on the paper, but they don't feel good when they hit the road. Now, they, they, they don't really matter. It, yeah, but you're also has, disregarding people. The survey. A thousand people filling out a survey. No, ma'am, I'm yes, not. You are. In, in fact, it, uh, a lot of people. I don't think they would have voted that way if they knew it was 20 minutes. Me. And they I would, say a lot of things. You all disregard what I those know, people said. No, but that's why they voted to be for all that. Be respectful. I mean, a lot of people knew that I wasn't going to go along with a lot of things been going on here, now that you mention it. And often, time and time again, you deny those people. <laughs> Well, what they did, they sent me here because they knew that they were going to get somebody to tell it like it is and look out for the best interests of the students. And that's what I'm doing. All right, we're getting oh, back. Oh. You say we don't look out for the best interests of the students? I'm saying that at the end of the day, five minutes on the day is not going to add up to anything uh, additional, in my opinion, on the quality of level of education. In fact, what it's going to do is going to reduce the level of service. I don't think anybody's looking at five minutes. I said okay. ten. Ten? Ten minutes would give us the amount of time that's required by the state. I make a motion that we add ten minutes to each day, beginning Monday. 
And if we have any more inclement weather, then I, I add that we come back and add more time. You're not, you're not increasing any of the half day? You're not making them whole days? So what was it again? 13, I'm sorry. 14, 15, Just 16, 10 minutes. 17, 18, 10 19, minutes. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, in addition to what? 28. 10 minutes would give us the time we needed in three extra hours. Yeah. So no of those days we're picking up. We're just adding 10 minutes based on your motion. Yep. You can do a friendly amendment. <laughs> All right. 33 days until Easter break, if I counted right. If I could add something, is sure. it going to bookend that? Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> Please. <laughs> or is it going to be 10 minutes at the beginning or 10 minutes at the end? 10 minutes at the end is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I don't think we could pick kids up any earlier. We'd have to be at the end of the day. Well, Janet has a motion. Does anybody want to second that, or is it going to die for lack of a second? I'm looking at. Okay, since I hear no second... Does anybody else have a motion? I make a motion that we go full day on March 30th and we go to school full day on primary election day. Which gives us, gives us nine hours, right? I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on that? You want to repeat your motion, Karen? Make a motion that we attend school a full day on March 30th, and we go a full day on the work day for the primary election day. Okay, then I do have some discussion. You're saying the day, uh, you're saying go before Easter break, Good the, Friday? That Friday, go full day. And not and on, the April 1? Right, not the April 1. Or we could, if you if you think the teachers and the students would prefer the April 1, I'm fine with that, either one of those, but I'd rather make up, uh, make it a whole day, one of those, March 30th or April 25th. I think if you get into Memorial and June, you're running into a lot of the traffic, and I don't want the buses on the road. So one of those, I'd be fine with either one and the primary election day. So whatever y'all would like to do would be... What's the date of primary election? Is um, the, eight, that's, the 8th um, of May. Yeah. It's not marked on my I calendar. suspect that I, I, my preference would be if we're going that way is that you would take the April day okay instead of the one before before because Easter break people may have already made reservations and That's that fine. kind of thing to everybody, go on are you Easter everybody break. Okay with that? I still say we're going against what the people have asked well and I agree you with you want that. to amend the motion then to that I, well I'm I, <laughs> Okay. I'm like you. I, I still hate that. But right, I I'm going to take my motion off the table for a minute okay. in further discussion. I believe, and I don't have anything to support this, but I think when the teachers filled out that survey to add extra minutes on their day, it was not stating 20 minutes. I agree. They thought, yeah, we'd Ten like minutes. to add minutes to it, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 at the most. But I think if that survey was sent out again today, it would be different. It would be a different outcome. So that's why I don't want to go against what our teachers want. That's not what I want to do. But I don't think it was clear for what was on the table. It wasn't 20 minutes. Was this a teacher survey? I thought it was a community survey. Well, it was. It, it was community. It was 30% um, of the respondents were teachers and 70% uh, uh, were, were uh, community members. So we've got the community and the teachers wanting to add minutes. I think we need to add minutes, whether it's <laughs> 10 or 15. One of the options about doing the early release or adding another day, that wasn't on the survey. So I'm very certain. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Yeah. Say it again. That actually wasn't on the survey. It's an option. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, well, that changes the whole thing then. And, well, and as I said, when we, when we add, sent it back out to the buildings, mm -hmm. the teachers had you know, utilizing, you know, some of the early release days or election day, and then some of the other buildings had used some of those and then pair it with 10 minutes. I amend it then, Bill. That's what, uh, <laughs> that's what the building said when we I, did building I, I specific. I withdrew it. You have to make okay. a new motion. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion 
that we go a full day on April 25th, which is an early release day, and take away the work day on May the 8th and make that a full school day. I second it. So again, we're not adding minutes. No, we're not. But like she said, that wasn't an option on the survey. So now my question mark. Okay, let me. Okay, go ahead. Technicality. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Yes. No. How many hours will that give us? I knew. I knew I was doing wrong, and that's why I stopped. Well, if you're if you're just if you're taking one early release day and and one full day, uh -huh. that puts you right at a thousand twenty-five. Okay. And that's nine hours, right? That's nine hours plus. So you know? if you and have then more and then you have well then what you have is you actually have nine more hours on three more early release days and they're spread out in three different months if and you if need it. And if we come back next month at our meeting and we've had some more bad weather, then we'll we have to go back to the drawing board and say, Okay, what can we do now? But I think that solves right. our problem tonight. Well, one thing it will solve too is if we come back in March and we have had more bad weather, <clears throat> then the days will be longer. So I think we could add it to the end of the day rather than the beginning of the day, so that we wouldn't have kids getting a continuing to get on the bus in the dark. In the dark. Could I add something? Sure. Um, the way we have it set up, that sets us straight for now. But why not be a little bit more proactive? Like you guys said, the survey didn't really show the community all the options we have. So why not after this session we send out another survey with all the options laid out? We so need to do something. Back. We got to. We've got to get started now. on it. If we are going to add time, we've got to get started on it. Got to start it Monday if we're going to add to the day. But like we're not adding minutes, to the day right now. That was but. an option. I think he's saying if we do act on this, if I'm understanding, send out, send out another survey, survey say, saying if we have to do anything again, all these options are laid out. Is that what you're saying, right. sir? We're not yeah. adding minutes, is, if I'm hearing this correctly. No. So we sent out another survey to say specifically how many minutes, if something does go wrong, do we add to the school time? Oh, no. Yeah. Well, one of the problems that we're going to face if we go with you know, this motion for the 25th and the uh, 8th, if something happens later on and we come back, we're not going to have too many days to add minutes we're to. Mm -mm. We'd have to add a lot more minutes to make up time if we only yeah, have, let's say, 15 have, days left. We'd only have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, mm -hmm. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I have a motion and second. Is there any further discussion? 15, 20, 21, 22 days is all we'd have. <coughs> so adding no minutes, just taking a a work day and an early release. Yeah. That's the motion. That's the motion, and we had a second. And with further discussion, I think, Bill, maybe we would see the February and March would be your bad weather time, so if we have to make a, a something else, we'd have April to work with it, too. We could basically do the same. By if we, we start off adding minutes, and you're saying if we have bad weather, then in March we could do something else. We could come back in March and take those work days at that point. <clears throat> you know, if we just add some minutes now, we could come back in March and take April and May if we need to. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Or well, March. Yeah, my uh, suggestion would be 10 minutes a day. We need more time. We take the early release day on the 31st of March. If we need even more time to nap, we take election day. We need more, or uh, the 25th of April. If we need more time, then we take the 8th and we list in order where it is we're going to get the makeup time from if we need it. But I didn't make the motion. Well, I think you, we've got a motion in a well, second. Well, you want to withdraw your motion and let Bill make it? I can one? withdraw it if we're going to um, have discussion. I mean, if, if, if you have a better plan. Okay, my motion, which I am allowed to make a motion, <laughs> since we're a small board, I would make a motion that we add 10 minutes to the day for the remainder of the year. Then, if need be, we take in order the early release day on March 30th, then if we still need more time, we take the 
early release day on April 25th, then election day, May 8th, and that still leaves us with the... So go down the line. Yeah. Would, would you want to take March 30th ahead of April 25th? They want April 25th versus the 30th. Yeah. They don't want to That's go into their Friday. spring break. Well, I'm just thinking of people that might have reservations. Yeah, that's what I'm on saying. Planes or stuff like April that. April 25th should be your first choice, not <coughs> March 30th. March 30th is Good Friday. Okay, so. Well, 10 minutes is going to give you your three hours. 10 minutes, then April 25th, and then May 8th. June 8th. No, May 8th. Oh, May 8th for election. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because I would still be real hesitant because it was me that added the or made the recommendation to do the Friday, you know, before Memorial Day because of the amount of traffic. And that was yeah. years ago. No, we don't want to do that. So that would give us 12 hours, right, Mark? If we add 10 minutes and okay. then we I'm take... I'm losing track of all the motions here. <laughs> okay. Well, we would... If ten, you add 10, 10, if you add 10 minutes, it gets us 12 hours. 12 hours. Okay, so that, that takes you to 1,028. Three extra hours is three what I'm saying. Three extra hours. Plus three. And yes. plus three plus six, 12 extra hours. No. No. If he just says it out, 10 minutes out. first. He's just doing 10 minutes until we need the. Until we need the other. Right. Right. So and you've got a, you, you've got 1,028. Yeah, you've got 1,028. So you've got one late start basically in the bank. And then if you use that up, then, then you would go in order with these makeup days. Or make up half days. I second that motion. Do you have a motion and a second? Is there any further discussion? Okay, motion second, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion passes four to one. Okay, next. Student board member reports. Jenna Tyler, Colin, and Keelan. Thank you, board. From Moyock Middle. Glad you're still awake. <laughs> <laughs> From Moyock Middle School, Moyock will begin an after-school art club starting this month. Currently, 65 students have shown initial interest. Students will create projects based on their level of interest. Saturday, June, January 13th, Currituck County High School hosted the Future Business Leaders of America Eastern Region Competitive Events. 250 students and advisors were in attendance. While they were while, they, while there, they competed in performance events such as public speaking and job interview. They also took upon recognition exams in Microsoft Office, social media, and general business concepts. Moyock Middle School brought home 30 individual awards and two chapter awards. Moyock Middle School had four students make the Eastern Region All-District Band. These students spent three months preparing for the audition when, where they competed against hundreds of middle school band students from all over eastern North Carolina. They had to memorize six major scales and a full range chromatic scale, prepare a solo, and sight read a musical excerpt. The students participated in the All District Clinic at Eastern Carolina U University last weekend. They spent two days rehearsing and performing a concert as a part of the most elite middle school band experience in eastern North Carolina. Mr. Horn, one of the seventh grade social studies teachers and his students, participated in an on-site museum of World War I memorabilia provided by the MacArthur M Museum. Students visited the display over the course of three days to learn more about this time period. Our FBLA will host the Valentine's Day dance on February 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. FFA at Moak Middle School will be celebrating National FFA Week from February 19th to February 23rd with dress-up days and a Kiss the Pig contest to support American agriculture. There are 24 million jobs supported by American agriculture, so it's important that we teach each generation how important agriculture is to our everyday life. Our first ever Parent Technology Night that was hosted on January 16th was a huge success. We had 50 students represented that evening. Parents were appreciative of the information and found the night to be helpful. Mayock Middle School cheerleaders will be participating in the conference competition on Saturday, February 17th, 2018. The competition is at Camden County High School and begins at 12 p.m. We will have 17 girls and a manager participating in this event. The girls have two and a half minutes to show off to the conference the spirit of Mayock Middle School. We wish them luck. From Charbel Elementary, we are so glad the snow has stopped and we have gotten back to our normal days of instruction. Our students have worked extremely hard on the middle-of-the-year benchmark assessments and NC check-ins, regardless of the unusual schedule we have had. 
Our counselor recently had a representative from Albemarle Hope speak to every class on anti-bullying. This is an annual program that gives our students knowledge and skills for promoting a safe school. On Tuesday, we kicked off our Booster Dawn fundraiser with an amazing pep rally. Each student will receive a custom lap tracking shirt made possible by our community sponsors, Odom Lawn Care and Tractor Service, Kurtuck YMCA, Sydney P. Garrett Farms, Next Care Urgent Care of Elizabeth City, Sierra Broda with State Farm, B.A. Mechanical Elizabeth City Trophy, Fitness Warehouse, Big Daddy's Pizza, and Southland Restaurant Catering. Thank you for your support. The kids have been very excited, and we will hold our fun run this Thursday, February 8th at 1 p.m. Come out and support our kids. Our Title I team and staff are planning a parent involvement reading night on February 27th at 6 p.m. for Dr. Seuss Week. Come out and read with your child. From J.P. Knapp Early College, recruitment for next year's class of 2022 is now underway. Student and parent information meetings were held at each of the middle schools over the last two weeks. The student and parent applications are now open and can be accessed on the J.P. Knapp Early College website. The application period runs from February 1st through March 2nd. Beta Club hosted a Valentine's blood drive today. Our open house for the parents and student applicants is being held tonight. This week is Counselor Appreciation Week, and we are blessed to have the most incredible school counselor ever in Ms. Sue Boone. From the students and staff at J.P. Knapp Early College, thanks, Ms. Boone, for all you do for all of us. Next week is the Bus Driver Appreciation Week, and we are planning gifts and a luncheon for our wonderful bus drivers. Our Science Olympians will be competing in the Science Olympiad Regional Competition at East Carolina University on Saturday, February 24th. Driver's education class starts on Monday, February 26th at J.P. Knapp Early College. J.P. Knapp administrators will be meeting with COA staff to discuss textbook costs on Tuesday, February 27th. And I turn it over to Keelan. Thank you, Jenna. Next up, we have Moyak Elementary. So MES staff and students have been focused on getting back to a routine the last few weeks and are working hard to complete mid-year assessments to measure growth and progress. World Read Aloud Day 2018 was a huge success on February 1st, with special guests reading their favorite books on our Panther News Network, streaming live every hour on the hour. MES fifth grade students are working hard to create the ultimate derby cars in preparation for the big race this Friday at J.P. Knapp. More upcoming dates include Friday, February 16th, which is our awards program, and Friday, February 23rd, which is our first ever Boosterthon Glow Run. Drop by to visit our Panther leaders in action anytime. Next is Central Elementary. Central has been busy getting back in the swing of things from our snowcation. <laughs> Students are excited for our annual Love Bug Luncheon and awards ceremonies happening on February 16th. The week of February 26th, we will be celebrating Read Across America Week, in which we will dress up each day in honor of a Dr. Seuss book. And Friday, March 2nd, we will kick off our, kick off our month of literacy by having Miss North Carolina visit our school and read to our students. Come by and visit us at Central, where we are growing eagle leaders through the power of yet. I pass it on to Tyler. Exciting. <laughs> Good evening. Tonight I'll be covering Griggs Elementary, Knotts Island Ele Elementary, and Jarvisburg Elementary. At Griggs Elementary, Griggs is excited to be back at school. We are in the process of completing our mid-year benchmarks. Our fifth grade students are ready to compete in the Pineward Derby this Friday. Mm -hmm. Go Mallards! We are excited to welcome another author, Ginger Clark, on February 21st. Our third nine weeks awards will be on Thursday, February 22nd. Jump Rope for Heart will take place on February 23rd. We will be celebrating Read Across America on March 2nd with guest readers visiting Griggs and reading to our students. With Knott's Island Elementary, as we plow through February and not through snow, we have many exciting activities at Knott's Island. We started the month off with game night last Friday with the help of our wonderful volunteers. The students enjoyed playing board games, bingo, and the company of their peers. Report cards will be going home on February 9th. The second nine weeks of awards assembly is February, yeah, February 15th at 2 o'clock. Love is in the air the week of February 12th to the 16th. This week is Love the Bus Week and Love Your Pet Week. The students will be collecting donations for the Animal Lovers Assistance League and learning how to properly care for their pets. You can count on KI celebrating the 100th day of school on February 16th with many activities. A lockdown drill with the Currituck County Sheriff's Office is scheduled for February 22nd. The 23rd is a busy day with author Ginger Clark visiting the school to share her new book with the students. From 6 to 8 that night, the KIES 
Students will be spotlighted in a PE showcase where they will be demonstrating skills learned in PE to their parents. Finally, with Jarvisburg Elementary, greetings from JES. We are, excited, we are excited to announce that JES was awarded the Jeanette Peer Grant. We are super excited as we are welcome in-house field trips directly related to our science standards in late February. We will keep you updated. Come one, come all. Our annual Wax Museum will take place tomorrow, February 7th, 2018, from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Historical figures will be presented by the 4th and 5th graders. We hope to see you all there. Derby Days are here again. The 5th graders will participate in these exciting races at J.P. Knapp on Friday, February 9th. Let's go, Jags. We wish our team lots of luck. We just wrapped up our readathon where students were sponsored for reading at home and at school. It was a huge success, and students were excited to log and track their books in time. The second nine weeks awards assembly will take place on Monday, February 12th. K2 students will have their ceremony at 1.30, and grades 3 through 5 will have theirs at 2.30. The 100th day of school is quickly approaching, and on February 15th, students and staff will come dressed as a 100-year-old person. <laughs> Don't miss this exciting event. It will be fun. On February 16th, our end of the nine weeks celebration will take place with students enjoying the Minute to Win It games and fun. Join us on February 23rd, 21st, 2018 from 6 to 7.30 for our family reading night. We will have a guest author, Ginger Clark, joining us as well as many exciting family members reading, oof, many exciting family reading activities planned. We can't wait. February is quite the busy month, but we look forward to all of that it will bring. Stop and visit anytime. We would love to see you. With that, I pass it off to Colin. Today I am doing Currituck County Middle School and Currituck County High School. From Currituck County Middle, uh, the students and staff at CCMS are glad to be back in the swing of things. On January 29th, we had our first Character Ed Day. We are very excited about our new character education program in which every staff member, including custodial and non-certified staff, is the facilit facilitator of a small character ed group. These groups will remain in the same with the same facilitator throughout their time here at CCMS. With a focus on building relationships throughout the school and teaching about important character traits, we hope to see our students grow both emotionally and academically. The students were very positive after the first meeting and are looking forward to our February meeting. It's really cool to see and hear them applying the things they learned in character ed groups throughout the school day. The week of February 12th to 16th is Valentine's Week at CCMS and is being sponsored by our Raider Roundtable as well as PBIS. We've got some special things planned for the kids that week. From Curitiba County High School, the students and staff at CCHS are four days into our spring semester. We are preparing to close out our winter sports with several teams on their way to state competitions, swimming and track, and wrestling basketball going into regional competitions. Today, our senior athletes in swimming, track, and wrestling are being recognized at the basketball game. On Friday, February 9th, our senior basketball players and cheerleaders will be recognized for senior night. The ACT test for juniors is scheduled for Tuesday, February 27th. We are sending out an ACT question of the day as well as ACT prep sessions on Friday afternoons. Our character word for the month is kindness. We sponsor a quote for the week as well as one activity during power time that promotes kindness. And that is all we have for school spotlights. Great. Thank you. Uh, Next item, field trip requests. You can see the 13 field trips that Superintendent Stefani approved. Anybody have any questions on those? Mm -hmm. okay, I, next I, don't, I don't have a question on that, Dr. Domney, but I wondered if we could go back and do item H, B. <laughs> oh, I need to ask you a question about that, too. I'm glad you're going back there. <laughs> um, yeah, um, NAP, um, early college, um, had a recommendation for a, a calendar change as well. Um, the two secondary schools um, had the option off of last month's uh, recommendation to use Friday afternoons uh, to make up their missed time. 
Um, NAP wants to uh, protect their professional development and team time. And so in addition to doing a little bit of um, revising of their bell schedule, where they'll pick up some minutes uh, in the day, uh, they want to add 10 minutes to their day as well. And uh, Who did I, that recommendation come from? Pardon? Who did that recommendation come from? Um, Mr. Bass Knight, but the staff. 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 Anybody want to make a motion? I make a motion that we add 10 minutes to the day for NAP Early College. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Yeah. What would be the other options in lieu of that? What their, their other option that they were uh, out there um, considering was just what the high school was considering, that they would just make their Friday afternoons full days. Um, and that's what the high school is choosing to do on a couple of days. But both schools are... Um, changing their bell schedules and so time that wasn't allowed to be called instructional time can now be called instructional time and they're doing it so they can protect their staff development time so that the teachers can continue to work on the yes stuff that they're doing yes their typ their typical friday professional development yes so we couldn't like i don't see any or okay i don't see any additional early release days on here other than no, yeah, they've got a different calendar because their semesters are different. So, how does that work when a lot of these kids go off to another campus in the latter part of the day? How does adding ten minutes work? It doesn't have anything to do with the ones that are going to COA. I mean, they're already they're doing already more doing. Hours than what it would affect the ones that are in school in the in the building. Right, it doesn't change the college schedule at all. So in lieu of doing that, the only other option that I could possibly see, and that might not even be an option, you have to correct me, is other than make it Friday, every Friday, a full day, or add 10 minutes, or is there a C? <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't produce a C for that. Well, I didn't no. tell you did. I'm just looking at the calendar. I'm looking for a four-day week. Um, I see one in March. So I guess you could pick up that Saturday. I'm not saying we want to. I'm just trying to understand what all the options are here so we can paint the, the whole picture. Is that the only yeah. other option that you see? Yes. Yes, with their different calendar. Um, basically, what I did with, with the, the high schools is I said, look at your minutes, look at your hours, make a recommendation You know, after uh, meeting with your staff or your school improvement teams. And uh, the one thing that was out there is they had their Friday afternoons. And um, it was presented by uh, uh, Mr. Bass Knight and staff that they like to protect those and, and add the 10 minutes to the day to make up the time. So we didn't really look for um, option C or option D for them. Uh, because they didn't have uh, the number of early release days. Well, they have all the Fridays, but they don't have the other early release days or um, election day on their, their calendar right now. I, I feel comfortable with them making up uh, Fridays on full days. I, I like that. Um, obviously, he's got a motion, but we'll go with that. Do we have a motion? I have a motion. Did somebody second? I did. Okay. Before we go through. I just wanted to clarify. If you're adding 10 minutes. Is that for the rest of the semester, or is yes, that yes, rest of the semester. Yes. Do you know how many hours they are behind? Is it the same amount as the rest of the schools? No, no. They've got uh, they've got a different number, but by changing the the bell schedule, they weren't able to make up all the all the minutes. So what's this going to do to them? Is this? I mean, like you showed us that. If we did this, it would give you three hours extra or nine hours extra. Right. What's it going to do to them? Ms. Dowdy? Yeah, I'm trying to pull it up. I didn't bring that, of course, tonight because I didn't. But um, I have a spreadsheet where I've calculated hours about 1,000. <laughs> I bet you have. I, I, think, I think both of the, the schools ended up around 1,030, didn't they? I thought you said one was at 28 and the other was at 29, or one was at 29 and one was at 30. So then they would be four or five hours over, um, and then they would still have Fridays. Uh -huh. they, would, they would have Fridays to draw from if they needed to. So if Nat does their proposal with uh, the 10 minutes added on to there, and their next date would be the March 9th workday, they have a workday in their calendar. Mr. Product that you probably don't see on JPNAT's calendar, but... 
they have a 3-9 work day, and that's the one they want to take to make a full student day should they lose any more hours between now. But they'll be at 1,029 and a half as if they add those 10 minutes back into their day. <coughs> versus versus taking I see it, four yes. and a half hours. So the 10 minutes gets added through when? The end of the school year? Yes, yes so through, through the so 18th we, of May. What if we just took that work day on the 9th instead? What would that do? That gives you six out of whatever those hours were. I'd have to go back and recalculate. I don't have it here in front of me. But Works out to be like six hours, I think, was like 10, 22 minutes on the other chart, wasn't it? Is that about right? 10, 25, 10, 22? Six hours was one day. Yeah. Okay, so how many minutes were the short? They're 1,029 if they had 10 minutes into their school day. So if you take those six hours and add them in there, basically, they should be somewhere around 1,023. They still may, may be just a little bit short. So we could conceivably. And it would be in March, and they wouldn't have the option of doing very much because they have Easter break and they get out on the 18th of May. Of May. They do, yes. Of course, you don't have any. Ends much mm -hmm. earlier than you don't the have any more account. options. They only have that work day in March as yeah. plus Fridays as Google Group. Well, they asked to do 10 extra minutes. Because they wanted to preserve the Friday, their students stay and get extra help as needed, correct? And they get to yes. do professional development. I thought you said, yeah, that's what I thought I heard, professional development. Well, they do. Well, students, students, stay, students can stay back, too, for, uh, yeah. um, okay. I don't know if they're officially called office hours, are they, Tyler, Colin, on Fridays? Yeah, or just Fridays. office hours? Same thing, okay. But, but they could, I just want to point this out, they could take that work day in lieu of doing that, still have their early release Fridays, as long as they didn't have any inclement weather, they wouldn't have to use up a, any of their early release Fridays, right? They would have to use one Friday in addition to that work day, and then they would be <coughs> Yeah, my quick calculation said 10 minutes for them gets them nine hours. Because they, I, I'm counting 54 days starting on Monday to the end of their year. And they... If they lose that work day, that's the day after the grading period ends. Right. So that's probably a compile grade day for teachers. Karen, your motion was just 10 minutes a day? Yes. And you second, second it. Okay. I have a motion and second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Okay, no. Did anybody oh, I have? had one more question about the calendar. I'm sorry. <laughs> At, you, we've, now that we've talked about getting the minutes in for the students, what about the teachers? Teachers are <laughs> t teachers are all set. Um, and anything that any day that was considered a non-day uh, just gets tacked on to the end of the year. Uh, and so, but, but that's days are there. that's the part I want to talk about mm -hmm. because. A lot of them are staying after school and catching up. Can that not count rather than adding a day at the end? Because I understand there, we're always talking about neighboring systems, and I understand their neighboring system to the west is allowing that, where they can. They have to have 215 days. days. Yeah, they're, they're not in hours like kids. They're, they're in days. days. So somebody's doing what they're not supposed to. Oh, okay. What about the TAs? Do they get paid for this extra 10 minutes? I forgot to ask that. Yes. Hey, do, yes? Yeah. TAs are, the 10 month employees are all the same. Okay. So we, we also discussed, Mr. Stefanik, the possibility of when they're home on these snow days, you know, since we're in the year 2018, mm -hmm. being able to work from home with your computer. I know lots of them were working on plans and mm -hmm. grading, and and you're discussing that with their attorney, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So will we hear about that maybe by the next meeting? It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure he's checking, um, you know, past precedent and probably checking what other school districts may have done uh, to put it into a policy uh, format. And as soon as I have it, uh, I will get it to you. I think we should, you know, if we can do that. I'm, I know during those snow days I saw lots of 
teachers posted on Facebook about catching up on this and catching up on that. It was all school related. They were still working. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, why don't they just Skype and teach their class then? I agree. Can we do that? We ought to be doing that. If Let's do paid. it. We I got mean, Chromebooks. Well, I mean, <laughs> rather than just say the kids stay at home and play the video games and the, and, the, and the teachers stay at home and Facebook, maybe we could connect them together and actually get something done. I, I even had a teacher suggest that we could have, you know, some faculty meetings and, I, you know, everybody connect. Hmm. Dr. Dobbin, you mentioned all the all the uh, trips and activities that the students are participating in. I asked, I, since you approved them, if anybody yes. had any questions on any of them. Yeah. I, I was just going to make a you comment. Really interrupted me. Right, right. <laughs> well, they, they said they didn't have any. I paused. There wasn't any questions, so that's when I butted in. Uh, but uh, again, when when you look at that list, just you know, it, it shouldn't be lost on the variety of uh, of activities that our students are involved in, uh, and a lot of them are tournament or competition uh, based things and so they're not just involved and, and I don't want this to sound wrong as like a social activity but the students are actually excelling uh, in the, these different activities that they're taking part in and so um, congratulations to the students coaches advisors uh, anybody else that's working in those uh, activities heard tonight and saw firsthand these students realize that just because they're in a club or participating in band or swim or whatever, they're learning discipline and things that go along with the learning that takes place every night. Every right. Day. Well, and, and actually, you're learning. If you heard in, in the chess, um, you're, you're learning critical thinking I'm skills saying, and uh, right. and so things that are going to help you in school too. The same way. Sure. Well, exactly. Yes. Yeah. You're you're in something that you enjoy. Um, you're successful at, and if you're not careful, you're going to learn something uh, while you're doing it. Yes. Okay, next item, consent agenda. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. Then any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> next item, information items. Our next work session will be Thursday, March 1st, 2018 at the Knapp Professional Learning Center at 4. Next board meeting will be here Thursday, March 1st at 6.30. Next, board member and superintendent comments. We'll start with the superintendent. Mr. Stavonic. Thank you, Dr. Dobney. Um, just want to uh, highlight again uh, the uh, the teachers that were recognized this evening, uh, both uh, national board certification and the, the ones that were recognized uh, uh, by the state uh, for their uh, accomplishments in, in student achievement. Um, many, uh, many, many a high percentage of those folks were in the top 25 percent in the state uh, in the levels that they achieved in their classrooms. And again, that, that's, not, uh, that's not something to sneeze at. That's, uh, that's excelling at the highest level. Uh, and so congratulations to um, all the, the teachers. Uh, there's one other uh, award, and I didn't have a chance to check email, but I don't think it happened before the last board meeting. And so if I said something twice, then they can just delete it off this recording, I guess. Uh, but our CTE program, uh, was also recognized, uh, uh, Mr. Monroe, uh, and his, uh, um, his staff participated in a competitive grant, uh, process. And uh, according to Mr. Monroe, at least 100 of the 115 uh, districts put in a grant application for uh, CTE, and 14 districts were recognized with the grant, and Currituck was one of those 14. Uh, and uh, uh, so we get some money to expand um, the CTE program and do uh, awareness-type activities uh, all the way down into um, uh, sixth grade. Uh, and so uh, our students uh, will have uh, more access to CTE information uh, and experiences uh, all the way down into the beginning of uh, middle school. Um, the neatest thing about that is not that just that we got the grant, but five or seven year program I think it's five. proposed five year program, and it says the first fourteen to get it our priority school districts for the following years. Yeah. So uh -huh. as long as we uh, produce uh, applications that are similar to this year's, uh, we should get priority status again uh, for years to come and be able to continue our program. Awesome. Mr. Craddock? Well, I'd also like to um, congratulate uh, the teachers that all uh, were in the top 25% of not only the state, but our district. Um, the nationally certified teachers. Um, I'd like to also mention uh, J.P. Knapp for becoming uh, the first school in Kirtuck County that I'm aware of to be accredited. Um, 
I attended the SAD um, uh, luncheon and um, uh, conference or show, uh, not show, uh, conference um, at uh, JPNAP um, where we had a lot of um, uh, really um, good kids that are uh, setting the pace for um, being real leaders and um, choosing to be on the right path. And um, hopefully they'll um, mentor some of the other kids that maybe might waver. Hopefully not, but that would be great. Um, so with that, I'd just say that um, God bless Kirtuck County, and thank you. Ms. Rose? Well, I'd like to echo Mr. Craddock's sentiments about our National Board Certified Teachers and our math and language arts teachers and uh, the high school teachers that received awards, monetary awards. That was awesome. I'd also like to bring attention to just the hard work and faculty that we have, faculty and staff in Air County. Uh, this past weekend, we had track students that were, do, that were competing. We had wrestling students. We had district band students. We had cheerleaders, hunter safety team. We had swimmers that did really well. And we had people given their time on the weekend to go and be with these students and give them those experiences. And I certainly appreciate it. Ms. Etheridge. Yes. I'd like to thank everyone, the community, the teachers, staff, the students, for your patience during the snowstorms and the school cancellations that we've had. Um, of course, as you know, we've made a decision tonight to increase our time during our daily um, hours by 10 minutes every day. It was a tough decision to make. Um, it's tough to get everybody to agree, but I think that that'll work for everyone. And I hope the teachers and staff will use this time, this 10 minutes, and not just think of it as 10 minutes, you know, to just um, do whatever they want to do, but make sure that that's instructional time. I think that's going to make a big difference with our with our scores. Um, NAP had their open house tonight. We had a great turnout, and great things are happening at all of our schools, as you can see. When I look at this list of the 13 uh, field trips, and like Mr. Stefanik said, they're not just fun field trips. I mean, you've got your wrestling, state championship, you've got your uh, DECA, uh, FBLA, um, FBLA State Leadership Conference for J.P. Knapp, softball tournaments, band clinics at Walt Disney World. Um, great things are happening, and I'm so proud to be a part of Currituck County Board of Education. Thank you. Ms. Kraft? Yes. Um, I echo the sentiments of all of my board, uh, uh, board members, all the board members of the congratulations that are due all around. We are fortunate for, um, in Curry Tuck to have dedicated staff, wonderful teachers who are willing to do whatever it takes to make our students successful. I did visit all the schools this, um, this month. I went to Knott's Island um, yesterday. I was pushing it. <laughs> but um, they have a new award, I don't know how new it is, but an award program for good behavior that all the students are participating in and the rewards for being having good behavior is extra STEM time, want some of the awards. So good behavior equals extra learning, and they're excited about it. So that, that's really exciting. Um, and National Board, as a former National Board teacher, I know what those ladies uh, went through, and they're exactly right. Reflection is the key word in being successful if you're going to be a National Board teacher. Um, so um, congratulations to them and all of the people who were up here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I, too, attended the uh, SAD luncheon, SAD stands for Students Against Destructive Decisions. Uh, also attended the county wrestling tournament, or, and that was a week ago Saturday, conference wrestling tournament, excuse me. Happened to see six former students there when I was, <laughs> high school principal and they all had students that all had kids who were wrestling <laughs> made me feel old uh, 
I also attended uh, part of the Curry Tech County Middle School and Curry Tech or Moyak Middle School basketball game. And I visited Curry Tech County Middle School. And let's see. And one final note Thursday, we will receive the final audit re efficiency audit report or hear it. We won't receive it, we'll hear it uh, along with the commissioners. And that's this Thursday uh, at 7. And with that, do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.